professional comedian, right? So if something goes wrong, like jokes don't always work. So if a joke doesn't work, you just keep throwing stuff out there until you find something that sticks, right? It's basically the same thing that the Treasury Department has been doing for the last year and a half. Uh, so here's the economics recipe for scrambled eggs. Uh, find a large pan with a convex hull. <laughs> there are probably about six people in the world who get that joke. Uh, I'm happy to see that all of them are here tonight. Uh, put the pan on the stove and add two tablespoons of olive oil. Uh, if you're a Keynesian, stimulate the pan over medium heat. Uh, if you're not a Keynesian, don't stimulate the pan, just wait until the oil is hot but not smoking. It may take a while. Uh, while the oil is heating, you want to lightly beat six eggs. Uh, if you believe in endogenous growth theory, then only beat five eggs, and then later add a chicken breast. Uh, meanwhile, you want to chop an onion into pieces so small that no one piece can affect the dish as a whole. Uh, you want to saute the onions, cook the eggs, serve immediately. If you're a Keynesian, you have to make sure to turn off the stove. They often forget that step. <laughs> and uh, uh, finally, you want to add salt until the marginal benefit equals the market price. <laughs> uh, this recipe actually comes from one of my favorite economic cookbooks, uh, Rational Expectations by Robert Lucas. <laughs> This is not my all-time favorite economics cookbook, however, my all-time favorite economics cookbook, uh, Bok Choices by Milton and Rose Friedman, Cooking Solo by Robert Solo, Meals for One, uh, and The Republicans Are Destroying America cookbook by Paul Kirkman. Uh, there are also a number of diet fad economics cookbooks. Uh, these are somewhat unsavory. Uh, the most common one, of course, is the Eat More, Way Less, Secrets of the Laffer Curve Diet by our Laffer. Uh, this one continues to be advertised on the editorial page of the Wall Street Journal. And, of course, uh, by John Maynard Keynes, who could forget, in the long run, we're all going to experience weight loss. <laughs> All right, so what to expect when you're expecting the Nobel Prize. Uh, so here's what you can expect when you're expecting the Nobel Prize. First, you should expect an early morning phone call from a long dead economist. Uh, so they have transcripts of interviews with the Nobel Prize winners on the morning that they won the Nobel Prize. So this, so this is a transcript of an interview of uh, Edmund Phelps in 2006 by the editor-in-chief of NobelPrize.org, uh, whose name just happens to be, well, you'll see in a moment, uh, so here's the phone call. Hello, my, may I speak to Professor Phelps, please? Uh, who's calling? I'm calling from the Nobel Foundation, and my name is Adam Smith. <laughs> the response from Edmund Phelps, ha ha ha. Adam Smith responds, I know it could be a hoax call with a name like that. It's a terrible burden I carry. <laughs> this is uh, Leonard Hurwitz and his wife Evelyn in 2007. Uh, Good morning, Professor Hurwitz. And he says, hello? And his wife says, he's hard of hearing. <laughs> and Adam Smith says, oh, I'm sorry. I'll speak louder. Can you hear me now? And, and she says, yes. <laughs> And he says, thank you, my name is Adam Smith, and uh, ha ha ha. <laughs> we have a whole series of jokes through the cartoon book about congratulations, you win the Nobel Prize, and I wanted to share a couple of those with you. Uh, Ronald Coase, if there's nothing to stop people from trading, nothing will stop people from trading. Uh, Gary Becker, sometimes crime does pay. <laughs> John Nash, I figured out the optimal strategy for rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> James Tobin, this is actually based on a true story that when he went to give the Nobel Prize, his Nobel Prize speech, uh, the re reporters at the press conference afterwards said, you know, tell us about portfolio selection theory, and he started telling them about equations and variables, and they were like, no, 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 make it simple. And he said, well, it's kind of like don't put all your eggs in one basket. And then the next day, headlines around the world said, Economist wins Nobel Prize for Don't Put All Your Eggs in One Basket.
Uh, here's Joseph Stiglitz. Sometimes the invisible hand is invisible because it's not there. <laughs> Classic Stiglitz line. Daniel Kahneman, uh, human beings are not always rational. George Akerlof, buying an individual health insurance policy can be a real pain in the neck. <laughs> I flew out here from San Francisco, uh, uh, along with my father and, uh, uh, and my godmother Betty, and George Akerlof was on my plane, which was, I, I, I was too embarrassed to introduce myself, but he was, he was right there. I was like, oh my god, it's George Akerlof. And of course, there were a ton of other economists who were on the plane, and when I got off the plane, I told my godmother this. I said, Betty, you know, there were a lot of economists on the plane, and she said, yeah, I, I, thought, I figured as much. And I said, how did you know that there were so many economists on the plane? And she said, well, they all seemed like they were kind of mixed up. <laughs> I think it's a pretty great book. Uh, other people have taken a look at it, and they think it's pretty nice, too. So, uh, for instance, uh, Greg Mankiw likes it. So he called it a painless way to learn economics. Uh, I, wrote a, I wrote a parody of uh, Greg's textbook in his Ten Principles of Economics, uh, and basically the only thing that I think I could have done that would have been more mean to Greg Mankiw would have been to post something on my blog calling his book A Painful Way to Learn Economics. <laughs> so the fact that he called my book A Painless Way to Learn Economics uh, is actually extremely generous of him. Uh, by the way, you can buy my book on Amazon.com for $12.11. You can buy Greg's book on Amazon.com for $160. <laughs> or you can buy the two of them together for $120. <laughs>